Good evening and welcome to Tea Time with Cynthia and Leo. Say hello, Leo. Hello. <laughs> I'm holding him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he says hello to you. That was Stuart was getting him to talk back there. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed the snow. It's beautiful, I know. Gorgeous, gorgeous oh. snow. Gosh. I'm holding him, so hopefully he'll be quiet. He doesn't like he doesn't like men. Oh. I'm like, what is it with men? My son comes home and he starts to bark. Hush. You be a good boy. Be quiet and I'll let you be in the video, okay? Oh. Oh, he might even match my sweater. I'm not sure you can oh. even see him, so I'll hold him up a little bit. Say hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> anyway, this is Leo. Look, look what I got. Awesome. What is, you know what it is? Does it say it's right there. There he goes. Tea time. My son, Rex, bought me a mug that says tea time. Is that not awesome? So, actually, I think his, his girlfriend found it. But still, he gave it to me, and I love it. It's quite appropriate for tea time, don't you think? I have a little tea here. Uh, mm. Now, I have a question. Well, there goes my dog, but that's okay. I have a question for everyone. Um, do you believe that God wants you to be healthy? Do you believe God wants you to be healthy? Do you believe God wants you to prosper? And what do I mean by prosper? I mean to increase. Does God want you to have more? And more and more and more and more of prospering. And if you don't believe God wants you to be healthy, why? And if you don't believe God wants you to prosper, why? Now, if you're turning your Bibles to John chapter, not John chapter 3, excuse me, the third John, okay, that's the epistle, the epistle, excuse me, the letter from John, from John the Apostle. The Apostle, and let's see, I'm going to turn in my Bible because I'm not there yet. Let's see, so y'all turn to your Bibles. Here it goes. See, I told you he's barking. Barking at my son. And no, I'm not going to turn off the, um, I'm not going to stop it because we have been trying all night to do this and it's been one thing after another. So sometimes you just have to go, you know what, we're just going to make it the best we can because I haven't done one in about three days and I need to get a video up because I have the word from God. So let's go. Where's 3rd John? 3rd John is right before Jude and Revelations. So it's in the back. So 3rd John chapter 1, the epistle. Okay. There's not a lot. Do y'all know who, who was 3rd John written to? That's why I like my study Bible because it tells you things. So the 3rd book of John was not written to a church. It was actually written to an individual. That doesn't mean, though, or does it mean? Does that mean that it's still for all of us today, or does it, was it for just a particular person? Hmm. It says here, the elder, because John was an elder. He didn't say John the Apostle. He said John the Elder. That's interesting in, in itself, because he thought of himself as an elder, whereas... When you hear from Paul, he calls himself the apostle. We call them all, but all apostles, because they were sent by God to tell the world the good news, to tell the world the gospel, the good news of Christ. But Paul was sent out as a missionary, whereas John was really a, I guess what they would call, um, I'm thinking of a pillar. He was definitely a pillar. And all the apostles were all the original 12 apostles, the 12 disciples that became apostles, were pillars. And Paul called himself an apostle because he was sent, and John called himself an elder because he was a pillar and he was a founding disciple. Okay, so having said, said all that, is understand here when he writes it, he says, the elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. And many times you'll read, when you're reading John, he calls um, the ones he's writing to his children. Because he saw himself as, a, see, that, I think that's really what it's about. It's not how we saw him. We see him as an apostle, just like Paul's apostle. But he saw himself as a father. Now, Paul wrote to Timothy, and he called himself the father of Timothy. But John really believed that he was the father to all those that he was writing to. And when he wrote to them, he was writing to them as a father. And as a father writes to a child, he says, my, my beloved, 
And that's what he does right here. He says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. Not with all things, but in all things. And be in health, just as your soul prospers. He wasn't saying if your soul prospers, but just as your soul prospers, because your soul, his soul was already, pro already prospering. If you know the Lord, then your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, they are prospering. They are getting better and better. Your mind is getting clearer through the washing of the Word. Your emotions are getting healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And your will is being transformed into the will of God. God says, I will work into your heart to will and to act according to my good pleasure. God says that about himself. So, if your soul is prospering, then what John is saying is that I want you to prosper in all things. That means including money, but it also doesn't mean money. It means including friendship, including love, including love, including um, knowledge to increase. So he was wishing that he be in health and prosper, even as his soul prospers. But who was he talking to? He wasn't talking to everyone. And see, I think people don't understand that. They're saying, well, God wants everybody to be healthy. This is true. And God wants everyone to be prosperous. This is also true. But it says right here, even as your soul prospers. God doesn't want you to be as healthy if your mind is sick. He doesn't want you to be as healthy as a sick mind. He doesn't want you to prosper and be in health as your emotions are sick. He wants you to prosper and be in health when you're walking in the truth. And the reason I say this, and this is what John said, but I believe God was speaking to John when he said this. And I'm not saying that God doesn't want you to prosper and be in health. What I'm saying is that as your soul prospers, God wants you to be more healthy and more prosperous if your soul is sick. But this particular person, but God doesn't want your soul to be sick. Right here it says, For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, that you walk in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. How do we walk in truth? By knowing the Word of God. By knowing God's Word. We walk in truth when we know the Word of God and we know that God says that you can speak to the mountain and cause it to be that removed. When God says that if you have bitterness in your heart, it can make you emotionally sick. It can make you physically sick. But see, if you're walking in the truth and you're saying, you know what? As I forgive, I shall be forgiven. So therefore, I'm going to forgive others and God will forgive me. And then I have the faith to go and ask God for something in my life. Then I have the faith to command sickness and disease to stay away from me. Then I have the faith to say, Lord, you said that you are my healer. You said that health comes from the Lord. When you have the truth, then, then you can say this is for you. Then you can say, I am the beloved. And you want me to prosper in all things and be in health. Just as my soul prospers. And my soul is prospering because I know the truth, I'm speaking the truth, I'm living the truth. Because your word is in me and I'm in you, I can ask anything in your name and it shall be given to me. Therefore, I, I prosper, I increase. And everything I touch, God says in Psalms, if you go back and read Psalms, the first Psalm, it says, you shall be as a tree planted by water if you obey my commands. See, there is a promise there. But we have to do our part. We have to say, if we put God's commandments, his commandment to walk in love, to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, our minds, our soul, our strength, our body, and to love our neighbor as if it's ourself. He says, love our neighbor as ourself. I really believe that that means as if it were us. In other words, if we were hungry, we would want someone, we would give ourselves food. If we were hungry, we would want someone to give us food. 
We are to treat someone as if it is ourselves. In other words, we don't just ignore somebody's needs any more than we should ignore our own needs, even any more than we do ignore our own needs. Because if you're ignoring the needs of your body, then there's obviously some kind of demonic activity right there because when we're hungry, we eat. When we're thirsty, we drink. When, when we want to lay down, we're tired, we lay down, we, we rest. And when we want to treat others the same way, we want to give them a place to rest, give them something to eat, give them something to wear, care for their emotions, be there for them. When we are walking in that, that love, which is God's commandment, His greatest commandment, to love the Lord thy God, for all heart, mind, soul, strength, and body, and the second commandment, to love our neighbor as ourself. When we're walking in this truth, in the truth that God gave His only begotten Son, and he died on the cross, and he bore our sins, and he went to hell, and then he rose again on the third day, and he ascended into heaven. When we are walking in that truth, then our soul is prospering because our soul knows that it's going to heaven. Then, and really only then, can we say that we want to prosper, and we want to be in health even as our soul prospers, because then our soul is certainly prospering. So the point here I'm trying to make is this. Be sure that your soul is prospering. Be sure that you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and that your heart is right with God, because you have a heart full of love, not bitterness and hate, not resentment, not anger. And if it's full of those things, you need to confess them to God and turn away from them. But if your heart is full of love, then you should be prospering. You should be walking in health. And you should be holding up the word of God and declaring it over yourself so that you can walk in that truth. Thank you, and y'all have a great evening. Enjoy your tea. Enjoy tea time. Good night. <laughs>